In the FATF meeting recently, Turkey was grey listed over money laundering and terror financing. But that's not it. When Turkey was being humiliated at the FATF meeting, back in Ankara, the envoys of 10 countries were scripting a sort of a coup against Erdogan leaving the wannabe Khalifa rattled beyond his wits. Envoys from 10 countries, namely the United States, Canada, France, Finland, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway and Sweden released a rare joint statement calling for popular activist Osman Kavala's immediate release from the detention. The calls by the envoys irked Erdogan so much that he wasted no time in demanding their immediate removal from the ambassadorial posts. Erdogan is facing a double whammy and as much as the world hates Turkey's belligerence today, the people of Turkey too have far too many reasons to be sick of Erdogan. Indeed, he's ensuring that Turkey remains the sick man of Europe. Hi and welcome, this is TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Siddharth and in this video, I will tell you why Erdogan is destroying Turkey's economy. Let's begin. How does history judge a leader? Military exploits matter only if you were at a big war. Cultural renaissance is relevant only if you were pulling your country out of a deep, long-lasting crisis. In ordinary times of peace, the growth of the economy and prosperity of the nation are what matters most for the overall image of a leader. And Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan seems to be failing badly on this front. A lot has been said and written about Erdogan's Islamism and support for mercenaries or jihadist militias. Now, let's look at Erdogan's reign of misery through economic indicators. In the 2000s, Erdogan was a reformist of sorts and managed to fuel good economic growth. But as of late, he's on a course to devastate his economy with high inflation, low interest and depreciating Turkish currency lira. Till 2013, the Turkish economy was actually in good shape. However, in 2013, Erdogan faced unprecedented anti-government protests and since then, the Turkish president has taken up a strongman image which hasn't really helped matters. Turkey is becoming poorer and income disparities are becoming more visible. As per the World Bank, over 1.5 million Turks fell below the poverty line. Meanwhile, a Gini index of income and wealth distribution shows rising income inequality in Turkey for the past decade. Erdogan had stormed to power in 2003 and till 2011, income inequality continuously declined in Turkey. In 2011, the Gini coefficient dropped to around 38. On a scale of 0 to 100, a Gini coefficient of 0 represents perfect equality and 100 represents perfect inequality. Since 2011, income inequality has started going up. Between 2013 and 2016, there was a huge rise in the Gini coefficient followed by a small decline and another rise. Today, the Gini coefficient stands at around 42 in Turkey. The people of Turkey are becoming poorer. In 2013, the per capita GDP in Turkey stood at $12,582 and today it stands at a mere $8,538.2. Both foreign direct investment and the involvement of foreign investors in the Turkish economy are going down. FDI went down to $5.7 billion last year as against a record $19 billion in 2017. The retreat of foreign bond investors has been more worrying for Turkey. At the peak of Turkish economic prosperity, 25% of Turkish bonds were held by foreign citizens and today, just over 5% of Turkish bonds are held by foreigners. Now, Turkey is an economy largely dependent on foreign investments and tourism. In January 2017, Erdogan even launched the Citizenship by Investment program. However, foreign investors are simply not ready to get involved in the volatile Turkish economy. Turkish poverty is getting further triggered by rising unemployment levels in the economy. In 2013, the unemployment in Turkey stood at around 9%, but it has now risen to 12%. Inflation is soaring in Turkey with the annual rate just below 20%. Turkey is traditionally believed to be a cheap country with a low cost of living, affordable rents and economical food prices. But Erdogan's reign is changing this. Food inflation has been going up continuously in Turkey. In the month of August, it reached a painful 29%. Government threats of investigations and fines for selling at high prices are not working as high food prices are a result of the general price level rise in the country. As per a January report by Reuters, food is getting so expensive and unaffordable in Turkey that a mock photo circulating on Twitter 
showed a man proposing a woman with cooking oil can instead of a wedding ring. Now, prices have only risen further since then. On February 2nd of 2013, 1 US dollar equal 1.7488 Turkish lira. On Thursday this year, however, lira dropped to 9.45 against the dollar. The Turkish currency has shed 75% of its value against the US dollar since 2013. Everything in Turkey is boiling down to Erdogan's absurd policy of maintaining low interest rates. In Islamic tenets, riba or interest earned by depositing or lending money is considered unholy or haram. As per IMF's definition, Sharia does not allow payment or receipt of interest. Therefore, Erdogan opposes any move to hike interest rates even as Turkey faces very high inflation rates and a constantly depreciating currency, lira. Erdogan maintains de facto control over the Turkish interest rates and constantly gets the central bank to slash interest rates which keeps pushing inflation further by allowing the low cost of borrowing and higher liquidity. The Turkish central bank cut interest rates to 16% from 18% for the second straight meeting on Thursday. This again led to a depreciation in lira and pushed it down to a record low. It is becoming a vicious cycle in Turkey. Lower interest rates are leading to higher inflation and depreciating lira. Low currency value is making imports of fuel and other commodities more expensive, which again pushes inflation. Low interest rates and borrowing costs are allowing the Turkish construction industry to pump GDP growth. Turkey is indeed expected to grow by 9% in 2021, but it is actually fake growth. After all, there is no use of growth numbers if basic commodities like food and fuel are becoming more expensive for Turkish citizens. Moreover, the rate of inflation is over twice the GDP growth rate which means that an average Turkish citizen is effectively getting poorer. Mild inflation is necessary to stimulate economic activity and enable profit-making, but in Turkey's case, the GDP growth is coming at the cost of the people themselves. Meanwhile, you can expect a further plunge in foreign investments in the Turkish economy. Turkey has been put on the FATF grey list over its failure to control money laundering and terror financing. Once a country is put on the FATF grey list, the foreign investments dry up as it hurts the relations of the grey-listed country with big international banks and investors that follow FATF rankings. And now Erdogan risks spoiling Turkey's ties with 10 important countries just for the sake of keeping his political interests afloat. Recently, envoys from 10 countries, namely the United States, Canada, France, Finland, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Sweden and Norway, released a rare joint statement calling for Osman Kavala's immediate release from the detention. Now, who is Osman Kavala? Osman Kavala is a Turkish business person, activist, philanthropist and political prisoner. Kavala has supported numerous civil society organizations since the early 1990s. Owing to his remarkable contribution to numerous civil society organizations and human rights groups, he was detained on 18th of October 2017 after getting accused of being a business tycoon with a shady background and having contacts with the Gulenist terror group. He is today jailed under the provisions of several articles with allegations ranging from acting against state interests to putting national security at risk. The calls by the end was urged Erdogan so much that he lost no time in demanding the immediate removal from the ambassadorial posts. Now, it seems that Erdogan's rivals could use Kavala's detention as a political tool to seek his removal from the presidential office. For instance, Biden once said that the US should seek his ouster by backing Erdogan's opponents. He has to pay a price. And now, Erdogan is indeed facing the heat in the form of FATF putting up his country on the grey list and now 10 countries launching a diplomatic offence against the president.